Hi, Mark Phil, weather.com meteorologist. Bald Oregon here on Monday morning, October the 27th. We do have a Category 5 hurricane. Melissa, just to the south of Jamaica, has reached Category 5 levels right now with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. All environmental conditions are favorable right now. It has uh, moved very slowly over some very warm waters of the Central Caribbean and is in an environment of very low wind shear, shear, just perfect conditions for intensification. We warned about the possibility of a major hurricane and even possibility of a Cat 5. Well, here it is. This is the island of Jamaica right in this area, getting pounded and will continue to get pounded as it is a slow mover. It looks like it's uh, moving just to the west right now, uh, basically about two or three miles per hour. We'll start a gradual turn to the northwest and then the north likely crossing over the southwestern part of the Jamaica coastline here late tonight uh, into the day on Tuesday and then uh, turn uh, more to the north and east over eastern Cuba and then the southeastern Bahamas eventually, let's say by Wednesday or Thursday or so, it could impact the island of Bermuda, obviously, the tremendous damage expected of Jamaica, perhaps one of the worst hurricanes uh, ever in uh, Jamaica. Cat 5, a slow mover, a, uh, impacting the region for a long time period. You could end up seeing rainfall totals of 30, 40, even 50 inches over Jamaica. Certainly, uh, the uh, eastern half of Cuba will get significant damage by a major hurricane. It should remain major hurricane status as it crosses over Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, also some significant damage. So here is the eye as of early Monday morning. And again, Jamaica right here getting pounded away by what is now Category 5 Hurricane Melissa. Well, Hurricane Melissa has been a slow mover over the last several days. And again, right now, it is a Category 5 just to the south of Jamaica, Last observation was moving west three miles per hour, but again, it should start a turn to the northwest and then the north and then the northeast, bringing it, likely bringing it into the uh, southwestern part of Jamaica by tomorrow and then crossing over eastern Cuba by uh, midweek and then the southeastern Bahamas and perhaps eventually uh, over the island of Bermuda, perhaps even uh, at that point in time remaining as a Category 1 hurricane. It will not directly impact the uh, U.S. East Coast. That was a fear at one time, but it is staying out over the Caribbean and then the southwestern Atlantic Ocean. Ultimately, by the end of the week, into the weekend, it moves out over the open waters of the North Atlantic. Well, let's now take a look at the continental U.S., and we have a very active weather pattern even with Melissa staying off the coast, there are two strong systems that will impact the eastern U.S. This first system uh, moves from west to east to the Carolinas and produces some significant rainfall down across the Carolinas uh, from later tonight into the day on Tuesday. And then a second system will first form over the Tennessee Valley and move northeast into the mid-Atlantic region, likely causing a uh, soaking rainfall for the Mid-Atlantic from late Wednesday through the day on Thursday and into Friday morning. All of that will be followed by some very windy and cool conditions for Friday afternoon and evening in the Mid-Atlantic region, which is uh, at the end of the work week and also Halloween day on Friday. Here's the forecast from last night's zero-z run of the uh, GFS model for the next five days, significant rain fall totals indeed. Anything in purple here is two inches or higher and that is uh, certainly the case here uh, throughout much of the Mid-Atlantic region and uh, uh, the Tennessee Valley, the Carolinas, all the way up into the northeast U.S. Again, very active weather pattern over the next several days here with not one but two storm systems impacting the eastern U.S. Now let's take a look at last night's zero Z run of the GFS with respect to the 500 millibar height anomaly pattern. This is the North America view. We talked last week about a significant block setting up over the atmosphere over places like the Hudson Bay region of Canada, 
the Greenland, the northeastern part of Canada. Here is the reflection currently of uh, Hurricane Melissa just to the south of Jamaica. And there is one deep upper level low uh, already setting up over the south central U.S. And we'll move forward in time. And that is the first system uh, that will spawn that surface low pressure area that impacts the Carolinas from later today into the day on Tuesday. And look at that block. It's still intensified here as we get into the day on Tuesday. And then we have a second uh, upper level, a deeper upper level trough that will set up over the Tennessee Valley by midweek here on Wednesday. And here goes Melissa over uh, eastern Cuba and then over the uh, uh, southeastern part of the Bahamas. And we still have this block to the north, a deep upper level trough over the Tennessee Valley. And that will end up producing a strong storm system that moves from the Tennessee Valley into the Mid-Atlantic region with some soaking rainfall, certainly be some heavy rainfall in there, maybe even a few embedded thunderstorms as well. This is late in the day on Thursday. Again, a significant upper-level trough. Melissa moves on by off to the east. Uh, again, it could have an ultimate impact on the island of Bermuda, perhaps around Thursday or so. It's still maybe Category 1 hurricane status by that time. We're not quite done with this upper-level trough. Uh, even into the day on Friday, there'll be kind of another wraparound system that we'll have to watch. Not as intense as this next one coming uh, midweek, but uh, here's a, the, kind of the final uh, upper level trough rotating around a big long wave upper level trough, and that could have an impact in the uh, Mid Atlantic region, Northeast US, late in the upcoming weekend into the day on Sunday. And this is all the way out one week from today, next Monday, November the 3rd, still. A lot of upper level trough uh, showing up on the maps here a week from today across the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the Mid Atlantic region, and the Northeast U.S. And certainly, uh, this will maintain a cooler than normal weather pattern going forward for the next several days, right uh, in this part of the nation and unsettled as well. Now, let's walk through the surface forecast maps again using the Zero Z run of the GFS. We're looking at the North America view. Here is the reflection at the surface here uh, for this morning. Hurricane Melissa, again, a Category 5 hurricane. And the strong high pressure associated with that block up over Hudson Bay region of Canada, the strong surface high as well. And here's that first storm system that moves from the Tennessee Valley eastward into the Carolinas later today and tonight producing some decent rainfall out across the Carolinas. Then we get that deeper part of the upper level low right here, and that spawns a strong surface low by midweek over the Tennessee Valley, and that pulls up to the north and east into the Mid-Atlantic region, probably uh, centered on the day Thursday for the Mid-Atlantic region, places like D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, soaking rain, some heavy rainfall, maybe some uh, embedded thunderstorms as well, windy conditions as well. Onshore flow will be quite strong with those east to northeast winds, combination of that strong surface side of the north and east, and the incoming low. Here is Melissa by uh, Thursday, closing in on the island of, of Bermuda. And then we get into the early morning hours on Friday. Much of the system passes on by, but there will be lingering effects for sure in the Middle Atlantic region on Friday, which happens to be Halloween Day. Strong winds out of the west to northwest on the backside of the storm system, still quite cool as well. You may have highs on Friday uh, in the lower 50s in places like Baltimore, Philadelphia, well below normal for this time of the year, and there will be a stiff west to northwest wind. Then we mentioned that there was that second or third, in this case, the third system right here that kind of swings around that broad upper-level trough. We have another short wave swinging around uh, into the Ohio Valley by late in the upcoming week, and this is the forecast map for Sunday. And then into the day on Monday, could, uh, Sunday night into Monday, could produce some more rain. Mid-Atlantic, Northeast U.S. will go all the way out to next Monday morning. And here's that third low-pressure area that is swinging around this deep, uh, large-scale upper level trough in the eastern states. By the way, there will be cold enough air uh, for this 
late Wednesday, Thursday system in the Mid-Atlantic region. There could be some accumulating snow in those higher elevations of, for example, West Virginia mountains uh, later in the day on Thursday into Thursday night. So a very active weather pattern going forward for the next several days. Looks like it will produce a soaking rain event for the Mid-Atlantic region from late Wednesday through the day on Thursday and into Friday morning, all of which will be followed by very windy and cool conditions for Friday afternoon and evening. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.